All right, this is the week three video assignment. We're going to start with our day one video. Um, we are going to be looking at interpreting slope for 3A1. So we first need to talk about what does the word slope mean? Slope is a measure of the steepness of a line. Um, we make a ratio of the change in the y values over the change in the x values. When we talk about that, we're talking about ordered pairs from algebra. And those ordered pairs are x comma y, right? So that's like if you plotted a point. Sometimes this is referred to as the rise over run. We also will call the slope the rate of change. A lot of times that's how they'll ask for it in Newton. They'll be like, tell us the rate of change. Um, we're going to actually be focusing more in this class. We're not really an algebra class. We're going to be focusing on how to do this from real life applications, then actually picking out ordered pairs and graphing them and things like that. So we're going to focus on first interpreting and identifying the slope as a rate of change. Keywords that will reference a rate of change is something per something, like dollars per hour, miles per minute, something like that, okay? Something that has been added or subtracted repeatedly every time something else occurs. So if you say, um, I earn $15 per hour or $5 per hour is what I get charged. That would, if you had someone at your house and they're working for you, you know, say, um, and you're char charging them $5 per hour, uh, then every hour they work, it'd be like five plus five plus five plus five. So it's repeated addition, okay? Um, Jose has $500 saved for a trip to Europe and is continuing to save $90 per week. There's the key, the $90 per week. So that's the rate of change. Um, so the rate of change is the $90 per week and kind of seeing this in the rise over run format, we have savings per week and notice it's $90 per one week. So every week that he continues saving, he'll add an additional $90. A plumber charges $110 per hour plus $200 service call to come to your home, excluding parts, um, parts are additional. So this is just their, their base fees. Uh, what is the rate of change? Well, we have the $200 and we have the 110, but the 110 notice has the phrasing, it's per hour. So the 110 per hour, is our rate of change, okay? Diego is saving to buy a new vehicle. Diego has $12,000 saved and is adding an additional $200 each week to the account. So even though I didn't say the per, every week he's adding an additional $200. So that is the rate of change. It's the $200 per week. And again, you could write that as over one week and this one over one hour if you wanted to see it in rise over run format. So how do we calculate slope? And this is a little bit of an algebra connection, but we're not going to technically call things ordered pairs. We're just going to kind of reference them as new and old. So we'll have our new value minus our old value over new value minus old value. So that's kind of how we're going to think of it when we do it in this class. But this is the official formula for slope. It's y2 minus y1, which is your y coordinates. You're subtracting those over x2 minus x1. So we have our x coordinates and we're subtracting those. A big key to getting this correct and not getting the wrong sign, like positive or negative, not getting that wrong on your slope, is to make sure that whatever number you start with in the top, so this is y2, we start with that same x value that's connected to that in the bottom so that the order is the same. So you could do y1 minus y2, but you'd have to also do x1 minus x2 in the bottom. Um, so we'll be applying this formula more likely to real life situations, not so much the ordered pairs. So how do we get calculated in Math 123? We'll determine the units for the numerator and the denominator. So what's the input and output? What makes sense? Example, dollars per ounce or ounces per dollar. Well, most situations you would talk about dollar as the numerator and the other part usually is the denominator. That's just typically common sense how we talk about money. We'll calculate the change of values. Um, so we'll use the new minus old setup uh, to help us keep the order same in our numerator and denominator. And then we'll interpret the slope as a rate of change in the context of the situation or model. So I've got an example already pre-worked out here so we can see it. The population of a city increased from 23,000 to 27,000 between the years of 2016 and 2020. Find uh, the change of population per year. So they're telling you how to set up your numerator and your denominator by the phrasing population per year. Remember, we learned that per means divide. And we're assuming the change is constant 
they're selling us that because if it's not constant change, we don't actually have a linear relationship. So we can't really talk about slope. Um, so that's usually just a disclaimer they have to add in there, just so you know that you're dealing with a line. So what makes sense? Well, population per year or years per population, they told us, and it also makes more sense to talk about population per year. So M is usually the variable we use for slope. So we're gonna write change in population over change in years, new value minus old value for population, new value minus old value for years. So notice I'm starting with, see this went from tw uh, 23,000 to 27,000. So I'm calling this one my new population. This is my old population. And it went from 2016 to 2020. So remember, this would be the old years. This would be the new years. OK, so notice 27,000 minus 23,000 is new minus old for population. And 2020 minus 2016 is the year difference. So that bottom is four, uh, 27,000 minus 23,000 would be 4,000 divided by four is 1,000 people per year. And notice it's positive. We got positive when we subtracted both of these. So our average, we're going to say increase. Now, if we'd gotten a negative, we would have said average population decrease. But our average population increase is 1,000 people per year from the year 2016 to 2020. Okay, so we're adding an additional thousand people roughly every year. Okay, so let's look at this number three. Find the rate of change. A bird population in 2000 was 19,000 birds. In 2020, the same species of birds had a population of 28,000. Find the rate of change to the nearest whole bird. So we're doing what makes sense. It's going to be birds per year. What was the change in the number of birds per how many years? So notice these two go together and these two go together. If you read it again, 2000, the population was this, 2020, the population was this. So I usually do the, um, the, the more futuristic value first, like this was in 2020. So my population of my birds was 28,000 in the new year, 19,000 when we originally started, so that's the old, over, the new is the year was the 2020. The older year that had this data was the 2000. So we want to do 28,000 minus 19,000. So I'll need to get my calculator for this one. Let me make sure I have that on full share. So 28,000 minus 19,000 is going to be a top value of 9,000. So po a positive increase of 9,000 total over 20 years, because it's 2020 minus 2,000. So 19,000, we want to divide this down as much as we can, divide it by 20. And it's going to be roughly an increase, since it was positive, of 9,000, not 9,000, 9,000, 950 birds per year. That's the units, okay? All right, so that makes us move on to 3A3. I, I didn't do 3A2 on the pre-video for class. I'm going to do that um, with you guys. Um, so just we're, we're skipping to 3A3. So this relates to the slope topic. So identify slope and y-intercept and write and use linear models in applications. Okay, so when you want to write an equation that represents a linear or line-like model, okay, so things going in a line, either up or down. This is the formula we use to represent lines. It's y equals mx plus b, where m is the rate of change or slope, and b is called the y-intercept in algebra, but it's our initial amount when we think about it in everyday words, okay? So, um, and I said that here, is M is the slope of rate or change, B is the y-intercept, which is the starting value of Y when we have zero X's. So when we don't have anything, what would be our starting value? So to write a specific model, we need to determine what e, M and B are gonna represent. And then remember Y and X are just gonna be variables. So we're gonna be plugging in the M and the B, we're gonna leave the Y and X as letters. So Paige makes $18 per hour. Write a linear model to represent the situation. So since it's 18 per hour, that's the slope or the rate of change. It, she doesn't have any money. It never tells us she had any money to begin with. So she's starting out fresh. 
So her B value would be zero since we're not provided with any information about her already having been paid any money up front or having any money like in a savings account. So we're gonna let X represent the number of hours she works because she gets paid per hour. Then Y will be the total amount that she earns at the given number of X hours. So her like, if we're doing it for a whole week, you know, that would be her total paycheck for the week. We can model this situation with Y equals 18X and you could write plus zero there, but we don't usually write plus zero, um, but that would be the M and the B. And notice the X and the Y are just variables, okay? Use this model to determine what Paige will earn if she works 22 hours. Okay, so if she works 22 hours, oops, it's 18x, we're gonna write 22 in for hours. Remember x was how many hours does she work? Then we're gonna figure out her paycheck for that amount of time. So she's gonna get $396, okay? Suppose Paige has already earned $420 at another side job this week before working any hours at her regular job where she earns the $18 per hour. Model an equation for Paige's weekly earnings for this particular week. So a starting amount or initial amount, sometimes called a one-time fee, before any X's occur is the Y-intercept or the B in our formula. So Paige has already earned a, uh, just a fixed $420. So now instead of a plus zero at the end, which we didn't really write, we would have plus, plus 420. So she's at this, she's already got this in her bank. Now she's going to work her regular job. Okay. So how much total will Paige earn for the week if she works 17 hours at her regular job? So she would have 18 hour dollars an hour for 17 hours plus the total money she already had deposited. So 18 times 17 is 306 plus 420 is $726, okay? If Paige earns 834 total for that week, how many hours did she work at a regular job? Okay, so this is different. This is her end pay. So that's that Y. Because X was hours, Y was total of what she was going to get paid. So we're going to write our formula again. Y equals 18X plus the 420. And this time we're going to swap in and put the 834 in for her bill, what she's going to get paid. Okay. Now we know that she already got 420 at the other job. So if we subtract that over, that'll help us know how much she earned at her regular job. So if we subtract that over from both sides. It'll cancel on this side, and then we'll be left with 414 equals 18x. And this is just like when we were solving proportions. We divide by the one that's next to our x. So she worked 23 hours, not money, because remember, we're solving for x this time, OK? Um, a phone company charges for services according to this formula. Cost of uh, n, which we'll have to figure out what n is in just a minute, is 27 plus 0 0.08 N, N is the number of minutes talked, okay? So the cost for total minutes talked is, which is gonna be our monthly charge, 27 as a base fee. So notice that doesn't have the X or the any variable next to it. So in this formula, this is actually my B. And since we, our N is being called an X in the, or our X is being called N in this problem, this is our N. M is always next to a variable in the linear form, okay? Um, so what is the slope? Well, it's going to be 0 0.08. And since this is uh, what we're being charged, that's going to be per minute. We want to put units on that. So that's how much we're paying per minute is eight cents to talk. What uh, are the units of the slope? So I already did that for you. <laughs> it's dollars per minute. Or actually, we should say cents, but it's fine because the total cost is gonna be in dollars. Um, and then what is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is 27. This is kind of a base fee that everyone has to pay, whether they talk on their phone or not, okay? All right, so that's it for our day one video.